if you're looking for a free tool to annotate images, QPath is your tool. So head to qpath.github.io and you can download it here. So here we are in QPath and what we need to do, we need to drop an image here. I have a few images scanned, so I can just drop one here and it's going to ask me a question about the image type. This is Brightfield H&E. And if you wanted to have multiple images here, you would have to open a project or create a project. Today, we're just going to be focusing on annotations. I'm taking my tablet and let's see how well this goes. So here is our menu. And we just switched off the side. We can switch it off. We don't really need it. Now, currently, the moving tool. And when you hover over those buttons, you will see what these tools are called. Tool, move tool, right, for moving the image. If you go to the tools, they're duplicated here. And for those of you who are very computer savvy and use shortcuts, you can basically use shortcuts. You don't have to click on all that things. I'm from the clicking tribe, so I'm going to just keep clicking. So for this, we are moving the image here. As the name says, we have now, and we just make a rectangle. Very easy. Then it by default goes back to the move tool, so I can move my image. But if I'm inside of my rectangle, I can also move the rectangle, which is fantastic. And then when I click on the edge, it's going to be red and now glued to the image. I cannot move it anymore. So when it's active and you double click outside, it's going to be not active. It's going to be red. And if you want to activate it again and change anything, you double click inside and it becomes active. You can move it again. When you're outside of it, you're moving the image. Pretty handy feature, I have to say. The rectangle, I don't use it that much, but you know what? Other people might. The same counts for an ellipse. Our thing is actually has an ellipse shape. Put it inside. And again, double click. It becomes red. You cannot change it. You click inside. You move it. And when we open our side panel and check on annotations, we see a list. Annotation rectangle, annotation ellipse. Amazing. If we want to get rid of them, we uh, make them activated and click delete. And they disappear here. And look, here we even colors for different annotation classes. It's amazing. Moving on in our toolbar, we have a line. We just measure this line. And here in this panel, you can see that this line has a certain length in micrometer, which is amazing for pathologists because we operate in micrometers, not really in pixels, but you have to have the resolution information embedded in the picture image metadata. If you don't have it, then it's going to be in pixels. So start making another one. The other one gets red, so it's not activated. So if you want to change the class, you have to double click on the new class, click OK, use the annotation. Let's move to the polygon. In polygon, you can draw. This is me on my tablet. I can make a very sophisticated shapes. The thing with the polygon is that it actually consists of a lot of these um, little points. And you can move every single one of them if you want to adjust it. But obviously, it's not that practical because then we're going to have, I don't know, some kind of star or a hedgehog. There is a better tool to do it. So I'm going to move to it right now. This tool is called Brush Tool. Let's use the brush. The brush is pushing... Like it's like a circle pushing annotation either from the inside to the outside, or if you click the Alt key, then you can actually do it from the outside to the inside. I love this tool. You can correct your annotations so easily. We can get up. Oh, sorry, I deactivated my polygon. So the brush can draw on its own. But if you are within an activated annotation, it's going to work with this annotation. But if we wanted to just draw things independently, we can do that too. And the trick with the brush is that after using it, you don't go back to the move tool. 
you are staying with the brush. So you have to be a little bit more careful because you are in the drawing mode all the time. And if you want to move things or the annotation when you're inside an annotation, you actually have to click consciously on the move tool. Okay, so now I want to get rid of all those annotations. There is a trick I can do. I can make a big rectangle and if I want to undo it, actually Control Z will do it now in this version. But I want to get rid of all those annotations. We have uh, here, this is annotation rectangle. When I right click on it, I can say insert in hierarchy. Now it has nine objects inside. Now, when I click delete, it will ask me, do you want to keep the nine descendant objects? And I'm going to say, no, I want to get rid of everything. And this is how I get rid of everything. The next tool is called magic wand, the wand tool. It's very cool because it works with the image properties. So I am drawing this and it's growing to the edge of a certain property of a pixel. So you see that it's growing more or less to the shape of my cyst. And these cysts are called uh, parasitophorous vacuoles. And they are full of bradyzoids, which is a form of an amplicomplexan parasite, Besnoitia. We are here talking about an adrenal of an opossum. So this opossum has this parasite, and we are now annotating the parasitophorous vacuoles. Very nice. But sometimes this wand is like a little less nice when it's not so precise, right? We can also correct it from the outside if we use the Alt key. And then it's going to go, let's say, to this edge. I want it to go to this edge. And it's going to be at the edge. We can use the brush for that. That's going to be easier. Get rid of it. The magic wand doesn't automatically go to move either. So I click on move. Let's see how this one is going to do with the magic wand. Decent. Decent and a lot faster. Well, these are very high contrast, so it's not including them. But we can take the brush and just use the brush to do it. All good. And then correct the brush a little bit here. So for precise annotation, if you need to annotate something at high magnification, then that should work very nice. Even for nuclei, let's try. Yeah, look, nuclei is doing a pretty good job. If I had something, okay, here. We didn't do such a great job, but we can use the brush to help us. If I had an algorithm that would segment nuclei like this, I would be very happy. Let's look at the points tools. They're going to show here. And what do we want? Well, these are our points. We can even have a grid and have this image divided into a grid. If we want to move, then we have to move uh, specifically click on the move tool. So let's just count how many of these cysts we have. I don't want the grid. It's maybe good for something else. And um, let's fill those points, fill detections, and um, we basically need to start clicking and we should see some points. They're very small. I mean, when you zoom in, they're going to be bigger. But you can have in the size increased here. If we just want the contours, we switch off the fill. If you want the fill, we switch it on. Let's just do the contours and count. This one is a calcified cyst. So I have a little trick how to move the image without clicking on the move tool. You zoom out, then you move the mouse somewhere and you zoom in there and it's gonna zoom in around the mouse so let's count let's zoom in here here 
empty ones or you can count empty ones as well okay how many do we have 26 points we don't even have to bother remembering which is amazing and of course we didn't count all of them but if we were doing this for real of course we would count all of them so that covers all the tools in QPath and how satisfied was I with my tablet actually I have to say I was very satisfied I was really used to Wacoms and I bought this small Huion from Amazon and I'm very happy with it I can annotate without problems So if you haven't downloaded QPath yet, go ahead, get it, and start annotating. And if you want to know how to annotate consistently, there is going to be a video here that you can click on so that you always annotate the same way. And I talk to you in the next video.